Welcome to the tutorial scanning images in Harmony. Um, before beginning this tutorial, be sure that the drivers for your scanning device have been installed. If um, you don't have the original discs with the drivers on them for your scanner, um, you can easily find them. Um, they're usually downloadable from the manufacturer's website. So it's very important that you download them, otherwise Harmony will not recognize your scanner or see it in its dialog box. So let's begin by going to the file menu and by selecting import from scanner. So the scan drawings dialog box opens and my scanner just happens to be an HP um, scanner and if you have multiple devices they would all be listed here and you can select which one you want from the list. So your layer options are the same as always. You can either create a new layer or add to existing layer. Um, for this tutorial I'm going to scan the same image three times. I'm going to vectorize it in black and white, vectorize it in color, and then scan it without vectorization. So the first thing I'm going to do is vectorize color. That's what I'm going to call my layer name. So of course I will keep the vector acquired items option checked. I'm not going to create a symbol this time. You'll be had the opportunity to customize your vectorization parameters after you've done a scan of the image. So let's scan the image first. So this is the scanning interface uh, specifically for my printer scanner. So yours might look a bit different. So I'm going to select picture instead of document and scan. So here we have a bowl of rice with some chopsticks and I'm going to return this image back to the Harmony Scan Images dialog box. So that's what I just did. And I'm going to then close my window. Once again, your scanner's interface might look completely different. And what this does is it opens the scanner album. So right now we only have one image. And we're going to close this to return back to the scan drawings. Um, dialog box. And so as we continually scan, we're going to be able to view all our scanned images in this scanner album here. And this is obviously how you can access that album. So now that we've scanned one image, we can change our vectorization parameters. And I'm going to choose color and double click on that. And this brings up the same um, dialog box that you would see when trying to import in a bitmap image not necessarily from a scanner, so just a, a PNG or JPEG somewhere on your desktop. Um, so you have your original image here and you can zoom in or zoom out. Um, using the parameters that are currently set in this dialog box, you can see a preview of what your vectorized image will look like. Um, if you continually change different settings and play around, you might want to enable the vector automatically when the options change option. So the first um, option you have is the input. You can either choose one pass or two pass. This is disabled unless you um, disable this other option color as texture. So I'll disable both of those. And as you can see, this is constantly updating, so that actually made it fainter. The line's quite faint. Um, so one pass will is best for when you're just looking for black and white. Um, lines and two passes is allows you to choose a threshold for both line and color art. Um, the threshold values range from zero being complete white to 100% being complete black. So this is quite a quite a good um, range. Um, the expand bitmap is when you have a sort of an interior fill. This will kind of push that bitmap up against the lines, up against the black and white. Uh, the jag filter reduces a bit of the sketchiness. Um, so the output settings that you have here um, allow you to have no color art zone, uh, no textures allowed, um, and I can scroll through these. This is maybe not the best example to show some of these features. Uh, you might want to refer to the importing bitmap images tutorial because this is not in color, so a lot of these don't necessarily apply. So some of them are so faint you can't even see a preview. So color as texture actually will bring this image in in full color, but it'll just set a vector frame around the image, um, which is not necessarily what you want. Sometimes you want to 
uh, vectorize just the black lines and have the white disappear, but this will bring you in in full color. and only really works with the one pass feature. Um, so the optical registration features work when you're scanning in multiple hand-drawn sheets of paper where you've probably drawn out uh, like a huge stack for an animation. So the way that uh, you can keep your stack of paper aligned is by having holes punched in the bottom and having them fixed on what we call a peg. So all of these features have to do with that peg, the holes, um, the dots per inch, and the field chart, which and these are all traditional animation um, terminology. Um, the post-processing also has to do with scanned images. Um, it removes dirt, holes, hairs, things like that, and has a threshold number as well to um, remove anything that's sort of straying around a bigger block of um, graphite or dense color. Um, the miscellaneous brings you into closing gaps. Um, this once again works better when you're vectorizing something that's been inked as a solid black line and not necessarily vectorizing color. Um, there are two ways that you can smooth. The first being um, before triangles are created, the second is after triangles are created. Created, And what we mean is um, in a lot of software programs, uh, the software tries to normalize what it sees by creating the most stable structure, which is triangular formations. Um, I've seen this a lot in 3D softwares, for example. So when you vectorize something, a stroke, instead of being a, a vector contour with a stray of points around it, is cut into several sections and has lines that are just zigzagging across in triangular formations. And uh, that's the way the, the software is able to bring in your image. So you can smooth both before or after this occurs. Um, the preview, oh, once again, this is disabled because we have this enabled. So this will allow you to show the strokes. And here they're very, very faint, as you can see the vectorized strokes. Um, so you can increase the thickness. And you, know, you can continually increase that until you can see your vectorized line have a, a very definitive shape. So I'm going to go back to the colors texture. And then you can hit enter again if you want to update um, the vectorized image preview. Otherwise, just click on the OK button. And from here, you can click on the OK button, and it's going to take the image that you previously scanned before setting your vectorized um, settings. I'll show you where it is again. It's in the album. It's this one right here. And it's going to apply these um, parameters that you set for the color uh, vectorization. And now your vectorized color um, image has been brought in. Um, and basically what this means is that it just has a vector frame, um, but it's treated almost like a bitmap fill. So it's really just the frame that's considered vectorized. So let's try um, scanning in another image, this time in black and white. So I keep closing this and uh, restarting because otherwise it'll take the parameters that I've already set for every single drawing that I scan in. I can't scan, change a parameter, scan, change a parameter. It's going to bring in all those images in, using the last set of parameters that I've selected. So now I'm going to name this one vectorized BW for black and white and I'm going to scan in my image. We're going to go through the same process. So I'm going to send this to my destination by hitting on the re return button. And then I'm going to close the window. And I'm going to accept this for my album because uh, I think it's getting just fine. So now I'm going to keep the vectorized acquire items checked. I'm once again not going to create a symbol. And I'm going to go into the black and white parameters, uh, vectorization parameters this time by double clicking on it. So let's vectorize a preview. And we can see that the image is quite uh, faint. You can't see 
the a solid or structured black outline around the drawing. And this seems pretty normal considering that this is a, a very pale pencil sketch. We might not expect to see a bold drawing right away. Um, but to correct this problem, you just need to lower your threshold. Uh, so 20 works well for a drawing that might have been inked already, but it's far too high for what we're trying to scan in. So uh, maybe I'll change it to something like a 2 or 0. I'll go, to, I'll go as low as 0 to give you an extreme example. Um, so we can hit enter again to update the preview. And now the, the lines look nice and thick and black. Uh, you can see a definitive outline of the rice bowl here with the chopsticks. So this seems like a, a good set of parameters to use. So um, I'm going to click on the OK button. And now I'm going to click on the OK button here again. And it's going to bring in that drawing that we just scanned um, into Harmony using the black and white vectorization parameters. Okay, you can't see them here just because they're covered by the vectorized color. So this is brought in quite nicely, all things considered. Um, you can actually select the image and rotate it as well. Um, all these little black specks that you can see, let's just zoom in a bit, um, are probably, you know, little flecks of graphite or uh, hair, dust, what have you. Um, so we have a pretty good solid shape here, and you can actually go into the color panel and select a color and as long as you have the I think close large gaps option selected you could fill this in right away like that so it behaves just as any other drawing that you might have created directly in harmony using the brush or pencil tools So let's try scanning in one more image. This time, let's create a layer for a pure bitmap image, so no vectorization. So you also have the option of choosing the file format here. Um, so you could choose a PNG, a JPEG, I'll keep it at Targa for now. Um, and you have several options for your alignment rules, those being fit, pan, and project resolution. So fit basically takes an image that is portrait and brings it into the software so that its height matches the height of the camera frame. If you have a portrait image, it brings it in uh, using the opposite rules. It matches the width of the image to the width of the camera frame. If you choose pan, it does the opposite of that. It'll take a portrait image and match the width of the portrait image with the width of the camera frame. What this means is that the rest of the image, the portrait image, will extend beyond the camera frame, which is perfect for panning. Um, say you have a character that's falling through the sky, you can pan this sort of sky background behind it in a vertical manner. And of course, this works the same for landscape images in um, a horizontal manner. Uh, the last option you have is the project resolution. Uh, the same example I keep giving is that if you have a project of resolution 720 by 540 like you do with this project and you bring in a bitmap image of 360 by some other number, well 360 is 50% of 720, so it's exactly half the width, which means that this image will be brought in as 50% of the camera space. And that works in the contrary as well if the image is bigger than the resolution of your project. So I'm going to choose fit here. And then for the transparency options, you have four. There's pre-multiplied with white, pre-multiplied with black, straight, and clamp color to alpha. So pre-multiplied with white will take the image that has a transparent background and multiply and feather its edges with white pixels. Um, pre-multiplied with black will do the same thing but with black pixels. Straight will multiply feathered edges with white, black, and gray pixels. And clamp color to alpha will bring in the image um, and feather the edges with the alpha value of the image that's being scanned. So if the alpha value is less than 255, which is the max value the alpha can be, then it will it will only bring in and multiply at that uh, alpha value. So I'm going to keep it at the default pre-multiplied with white and uh, say 
scan. So we're going to choose picture again and scan. Now I'm going to send the scan to Harmony and close the window. So from this window, I forgot to show you that you can actually decrease the ratio so that you can view a full preview um, or increase it and then just scroll around so that you can see the specific parts of the scan. Um, but I'm going to select this like I do with everything else by just closing uh, the album and not deleting anything. And then I'm going to say OK. So here uh, the two images are overlapping again. I'm going to uncheck the vectorized black and white. And you can see that this indeed was brought in as a bitmap image because of the icon in the timeline. Um, and unlike the vectorized with color, because there's no vectorized frame, um, you have to actually use the transform tool if you'd like to rotate it or scale it or skew it in any way. Like that. So it behaves a bit differently than other images that have been vectorized that are a bit easier to manipulate using the other drawing tools. Um, the, to vectorize it is really to integrate it a little bit better with um, already vectorized drawings in your animation that you may have created within the software. So that's sort of the purpose of that. Um, but I think that's pretty much it for uh, the tutorial scanning images into Harmony. Stay tuned for the next tutorial importing Adobe Illustrator files and PDFs.